Okay. Hi, everybody. This is Bill Conrad. We're going to actually record a session here for it's going to be session 15, which is actually going up tonight for timelines of success. I've had timelines up now every night for 14 nights in a row. I actually have uh, about 10 in reserve, but we're trying some different things. I do a lot over the phone using Skype, and we also down to Reno Collective in, in Reno. We do live on the week. It's not live, but we do face-to-face, -face and we're playing around with some different formats, and it started to work. So we're going to put on the RL5, which I used to use a computer, and make sure it's, we've got all the data. I'm just going to let it run. And then I have today, I have Bill McCready. Hi, Bill. Say hi. Hey, Bill. We're, we're actually live if anybody's watching. <laughs> I think I'm still alive. I woke up this but, morning. But if anything, uh, we're going to... Um, a lot of ums. I'm not supposed to say um. We're going to, you know, rebroadcast this. It'll just be a mess, but for anybody that wants to see how these are made. So I've got a pretty simple little thing here. I've got a mixer and my RL5, my, my two uh, ATR2100. So I'm going to look at the sound. We have no sound now, so that's not good. Why don't I have sound? Turn the mic on. The mic is on. This is not good. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? I haven't pulled the power in there. See how we set up here, luckily? That's how the power cord hooked up. So you get to see all the stuff that happens. We had a pre-interview, and my head is spinning from the pre-interview with Bill. He's done more things than I think anybody I've met. Bill, uh, you started out a submarine. You can talk. I can get this plugged in. It's going to record it then. No, it's recording right now. We're live on uh, Google Hangouts to the world. This is newer tech. This stuff is just breaking really fast. I personally believe that this kind of technology is going to put the expensive local TV stations out of business because with a fraction of the money, you'll be able to broadcast through your the internet yeah. and then go up in your with like in my house, we connect to the TV on everything. Well, in the 90s, I owned a radio station in Hawaii called Kong Radio, King Kong. Mm -hmm. It's still on the air. We sold the station some years ago. But um, you're right. I put the first radio station online uh, at Kong, and it's still running today. The uh, interesting thing is we only had a population of 40,000, and uh, we had to uh, make enough of revenue to cover the mortgage and everything else. But it... It is amazing the changes. We put the first Hawaiian music radio on uh, airlines flying to and from Hawaii. So uh, I've been involved with this kind of stuff for a long time. And watching Bill's equipment here is so amazing because our control boards used to cover the wall and produce big uh, um, track A, D track, digital uh, tapes, and things like that. When we recorded our show, um, Hawaiian music radio, which we produced radio station. We had to ship it out with DAT tapes, digital, app, digital tapes, to 100 radio stations across the country. And that uh, show ran for about three years. We finally uh, ran out of advertisers when uh, first of this Mideast war killed the Hawaiian economy. Anyway, I'm just interested in watching him. Uh, Right, control board. I'm sorry, yeah, I've got Bill balanced out here. I can actually add a little bit more. So, Bill, on this, you don't really need a pop. I've got a pop. So, I'm going to turn mine up. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. As long as I don't go into the red, I can always play around with the W addition and move it up higher. So, this is, a, this is getting an inside view of how we set this up in the field. This is my field slide. I've got a new. Um, New uh, high-end uh, mic coming this next week, and I won't have to move this around. Just leave it down at the collective. Well, my sound looks okay. It could be a little higher. Bill wants a top test. Well, okay. fine. We'll talk about um, it. Anyway, we, the interesting thing about the radio station: we put a thousand dollars in capital and borrowed a million five from a Chinese bank to pay the purchase price, and then the owner gave us another two hundred thousand to run the station. So we basically got into that deal. Uh, Kind of debt free. We are not debt free, but equity free. And uh, we sold it later for $2.2 million profit. It was an AM FM combo, 50,000 watts. And the, uh, the big thing was uh, structuring the deal. And my, my radio partner started out wearing the pig costume, KPIG. 
and he knew how to run radio station. I mean, he used to run coffee for all the jocks, and then pretty soon they were working for him, and they couldn't figure out what happened. So just uh, structuring a deal was key, and I was a venture capitalist during my period. Well, Bill, Bill, I think I'm a little high now, so i turn down a little bit. Okay, I think I'm looking pretty good. So we're gonna we're gonna restart the. We did one recording on the ATR or the RL5. We're gonna shut that off and turn it back on. We're gonna record. So now we're doing the second one. We can go right into the show. Okay. Bill, welcome to Timelines of Success. Thanks, Bill. Nice well, name. Hey, he's Bill and Bill. Bill squared. I'll tell you, my head is spinning right now after the pre-interview. I got to meet Bill with, with his wife. His wife Terry was on the show last week. And he does so many things, and his timeline is so extensive that there's no way we'll be able to cover all of it in any kind of detail. So how we'll start is, what, what, how did you get to where you are today? Well, basically, um, I'm an old guy now, 70. Um, I ran out of job opportunities over 20 years ago, and the internet was just starting. I was on DARPANET kind of as an experiment before the internet came. And I was running a venture capital firm, and I decided to uh, see what the internet was all about. So I traded a business plan review for a website. The guy couldn't program it, so I programmed it. It was a program called Hotdog Pro out of Australia, the first HTML WYSIWYG editor. And that got me started, but my, my design was terrible. I mean, for the radio station, I designed bullets with little rainbows, <laughs> so stuff what, like that. What year was this? Uh, 1994, 95. That's when you had the radio station. Yeah, when I had the radio station. Wow. And uh, I'd been doing a lot of other things. We had a real estate project in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. Uh, I was working on uh, building computer clones in Hawaii uh, with the help from Acer. Computers in Taiwan I had a Chinese business partner. And we were a Nobel networking company. We did all kinds of stuff. So uh, today I'd be called ADHD or ADD or ADHD, whatever. <laughs> well, you, you know, you were right on the Pacific Rim between Hawaii and California, uh, Hawaii and California, Japan, and Pacific Rim. That's when everything was happening. Right. Right. Well, I built a big business in Japan already, and I'd already traveled to 15 countries in Asia, so I'm very familiar with it. And Hawaii is just a jumping off point, but it's actually closer from San Francisco to Taiwan or Japan than Hawaii is because of the Great Circle Line. So there's 13 right. hours on the airport. Right. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, that's very true. Now, Bill, I know you can't cover this in 10 or 15 minutes, but you're going to have to try to really push this down. Tell me how you got off a nuclear submarine being an officer in the Navy in the 70s, right? In the 70s, yes. To I got out in the 70s. The way you are today, because it's an amazing journey. I've never seen anybody do more different things than you. So if you can, try to cover the highlights of that journey to that. Okay, well, first let me start. Nobody in my family has ever had a job. They're all entrepreneurs. My grandfather owned 10 or 12 businesses, including a railroad. My father had a tool guy a machine shop business for all his life. In fact, while I was on the move to the submarine, he was building a missile nose gun. So, so we're just kind of serial entrepreneurs. Um, but I got out of the Navy and went to work at the shipyard as a GS-13 for about six months. I couldn't stand it, so I quit. And I had started a, a big Amway business back in 1971. And the, um, the bottom line was I had to move into another uh, apartment. And the guys next door were astronomers, and they said they were looking for somebody to run the Monica Observatory. On big so I jumped at that, I jumped off a wall, and went away, went to the big island. Um, and it seemed like one job with one opportunity just come right after the other. So I worked there for five or six years and uh, put the whole thing together. And then I moved back to the mainland to help my dad with his machine shop business. And along the way, I got involved with the Alaska Pipeline, recruiting engineers for that. I went to Alaska. For a year, we made a lot more money than doing anything else, and still building the business. Now you built that Amway business, right? Too, you're still building the Amway. Right. Well, I stopped time. building that in 1980, and I'm just collecting the residuals. And your residual today is 4,500. Unbelievable. 
<laughs> One of the only good <laughs> children <laughs> there probably that did that. It's anyway, 10 o'clock. Uh, along the line, I got interested in venture capital. I moved back to Hawaii and I went to a meeting and sat in the front row about they were going to start a venture capital. And the front row got elected to the board of directors. And I said, I better go back and figure out what the heck that is. So I'm pretty good at reading and studying and self directing. And mm -hmm. built and put that together. Uh, the Hawaii Venture Capital Association group and the state started Global Crossing, which is one of the biggest internet providing gateways across the Atlantic. A lot of other things, that's how I got in the radio station business. Uh, so we did all kinds of things, built computer phones, um, Nobel Network companies, things like that. And along the line, I learned to uh, program HTML. I traded the business plan review for a website. The guy couldn't do the website. So I found a program called Hot Dog and Pro, which was out of Australia, an HTML was with the program. We started, and after that, it was just a off the venture capital site, which is called Venture Plan or VentureMap.com, did business in 102 countries. So my wife got involved because I told her to learn how to market this, and that's one of them. And I've been building websites and things like that, and I got interested in day trading futures in 1995, and bought a bunch of $3,000 programs that never worked. So I wrote my own. This is kind of my history here. And Gary said, why don't you put it up on the website, and we'll sell it. And the website's got all over a million dollars. Sales of years. It's uh, pretty obsolete now, pretty long gone. A lot of people. Um, every site I put up, I try to monetize an issue. Okay, the latest one I'm working on is called Options for a Trading Room. I put that up a couple weeks ago. I still got a bunch of work to do. But when I put it up with the existing name that I have for my futures list, you know, I start out with $3,000 a month. So I don't put a website up. It didn't go make money. Now, I know you have a lot of websites. We'll list those in the show notes okay. with affiliates. Okay. And uh, we'll have yours up on our banner here. And we'll throw, on. We'll throw it up as affiliate, which is something you just told me to do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> trying to teach teach our host how to monetize things. Well, you know, right now my effort is to really produce a high quality mm -hmm. show every day, and then I have some other shows that come in and help a nonprofit. But it's true, you have to build eventually. You have to build a system that produces money to have things continue on, unless you uh, public radio or you win the yeah, you win the lottery, and you already win the lottery, and then you go fishing. So. There's so much more there. You, you came off a nuclear submarine. You started Amway. You worked as a GS-13 for a short period of time. And I understand how you feel, too. Tell me about that little story about Sigley. Oh, <laughs> the thing that made me quit is all the engineers would line up next to the time clock. You had to use the time clock to go under. And they would take 15 minutes of sick leave to beat the traffic. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, the, the GS system is just astounding. There's some really good people in the program. I was a lieutenant colonel, transitioned into GS-15 on temporary appointment to manage a program in Afghanistan. And I had some PH, fake PhDs or 14s we discovered. And it was like, we couldn't fire. They are actually protected. And we're in combat, and it's a dangerous situation, and it's bizarre. And I, I couldn't get them off the fob. Hard to explain. Mm -hmm. But it's a crazy system, but it does work. I mean, there's some professions whether it's the special agencies or the FBI or things like that. There's some unique environments of those. But Bill, you, you obviously weren't cut out to be a GS. No, man. <laughs> so of all these different ventures, what's been your favorite so far? Well, it's just been the uh, trading environment. I mean, the last bastion of free enterprise to be a trade, not an investor, but a trade. That is, a trade during a day or even for a few short minutes or even seconds. And that you're competing with everybody else in the world. And that's what I like about it. It's fascinating. It's not something you can just pin down and say, okay, this is a signal, or this is exact. And you've got to have your own control over money management 
in your metal attitudes. So, right, it's sort of like playing cards, I guess. Well, look, one of the best training spots is to watch the online poker. Yeah. They have no idea what other guys' cards are, and you don't need them to trade. Right. So now, now trading is the cost of trading has come down substantially in your lifetime. Oh yeah, Scream, I mean, down by a factor of ninety percent at least. How many people actually make a good profit or living trading these days? Well, the numbers are five to ten percent. The other ninety percent be the be the big. So, <laughs> so some speak. some ten percent make it big, and the other ones do that. Yeah. Wow. No, why, yeah. why is that? Lack of mental control, lack of money management, lack of understanding when you're, doing, when you're looking at the market. Um, you're not looking at the market. You're looking at a psychological profile of how the world feels about the U.S. economy. Uh, Just guess. that simple. So the guys who do the best are psychiatrists and psychologists. The guys who do the worst are engineers like me, accountants and people who want precision because there is no I mean, a good example, we live in Reno, and you go, you go to the casino and you put 20 bucks in the slot machine. You have to assume the party lost it because there's no guarantee you're going to win. Right. That's actually the way to go into the game you're playing is taking whatever amount of money you feel comfortable not taking home. But you can beat the casinos if you understand the problem of money management. Okay? If you have a negatively biased system, which means the casino's always going to win. Right. They have the odds. There are various betting systems. One of them is a Martingale system. Martingale system says if you lose double your bet, if you lose double your bet, if you lose double your bet. Well, the casinos won't let you do that five times because they know ultimately you will win. Right. But you could lose any time. You run out of money. Right. I mean, it does happen. Now, the anti Martingale system is you double on the win, double on the win, double on the win, and go back to the beginning. Well, you bet on a loss. Now you lose a lot of money on the last roll. Roll, roll. Right. okay. But you made enough on the way up, more than even that. So they won't even let you do that. Right, right. They put limits on the top side. Yeah. Now, now I, I talked about this before. It's funny. Our show last night was a blackjack deal. Oh, interesting. It was you haven't seen it yet. It was released last night. So uh, Connie Allen uh, from the back east. And she was talking about her little book and about how to manage your money and so on. So she wrote it after 16 years of being a blackjack dealer. By the way, she really loved being a blackjack dealer. Yeah. But she always won. That's why. I, I actually studied card counting, mm -hmm. and it's actually a lot of hard work to do it right. But it does work. You can get the odds in your favor. The problem is that the casinos will throw you out if they see you doubling up and you have a high count. So they figure uh, it out of uh, every casino in town, not just theirs. And they know who you are when you walk in. Yeah, you'll, you'll be face pointed. I was going off to war. And I, I just got out and I got recalled to go off to Desert Storm. And on my way over, I stopped at Laughlin. I did really well. I won. I got thrown out. <laughs> and then when I came back from the war, I had my tight hair cut. And I stopped in. I just couldn't resist. I won't say that you see me that I got thrown out of. But I went in there and I got thrown out two hands. Yeah. That's fast. That's right. So, but. Well, they, they don't build those big casinos. Oh, losing right. money. Right. But you know, you, you mentioned Reno, and you ended up in Reno. I've got to ask, how did you end up in Reno? Well, actually, when I joined the Navy, I, I went to San Diego first. The boat got transferred to Honolulu. I was at sea 24 out of 20, or yeah, 24 out of 28 months. Never saw the sun. So when I got out of the Navy, I ended up to stay here for a year, and then it became three and five and 15 and 20. And I lived there for 30 months. Um, finally, um, after the second Mideast War and a huge recession in Hawaii um, caused by the Far East being you know, underwater, uh, we moved to San Diego. And that was great. It took there about seven years, but it got too big. I mean, there's 18 lane freeway on one side down here. Okay. And so we came up here for a wedding in 2006. It didn't happen. I said, oh, there's mountains, there's snow, it's 100 degrees in the valley, and there's snow on them. And she looked at 300 houses online and bought one in three days. Is that the house you have today? No. Because oh, you live up past me. Yeah, we uh, lived up in Somerset, North okay. West. Now I live on the river. Yeah, on the river front door. Right, you live up past me. I live in the Mayberry area. Right. I love it up there. I look up the hills. Uh, there's, a, there's a trail that leads up to the top of the mountain behind me. I can get up to 
Well, all my friends we go in agreement. So listen to this. This is my birthday from my 68 or something. Um, I ski in the morning, go off to midday, fished in the afternoon, went to a show and dinner at night, and I pay no state or income tax, personal income tax, right. or corporate income tax. Actually, it's, it's a perfect environment to do what you do. Yeah. Uh, with licensing, it's, right. it's absolutely, and everything, even our corporate licenses at the state are about 25 percent less than, 75 percent less than California. I know it. I came to sell my money. tax deposits and stuff, and they called me up and said, you gave us too much, you got to come back and get a check. Yeah. I couldn't believe that California would have disappeared over the yeah. My wife has a real estate company in California, and we have one here. Now, the licensing part here is unique. She's a broker. She did have to go through some work to get her brokers here in Nevada. Actually, in some aspects, more difficult than California because I, they, they apply some of the same principles that they do in the game industry. Uh -huh. Of course, right. the, how they vet brokers here, real estate brokers. It's really unique. It's actually more complex than California. But, but, but once you have your broker's license, setting up the business, the LLC, the company is a streamlined. And we went down. Uh, you got our city license, but we went down to Carson City, and we were amazed. We walked in to the, uh, uh, not the court's office, but the licensing office. licensing office in Carson City, and the Secretary of State's office. And like, it's so small. <laughs> you go to California Secretary of State, they have a massive building, and, just a little, and they're all friendly. Right. And they, they just say, oh, we'll just do the paperwork now. Yeah. And they knock it out with the license. Yeah. I was just astounded. And then, to set up a corporation or whatever you might be setting up, there's so much easier here. Yeah. So they really have it on California. Plus, it's known. Why, why would anybody keep the kind of business you have in California? Yeah. Or anywhere else? Just well, I started a business there in California. I was going to move my life business there. And they didn't do anything for five years. They charged me eight grand yeah. because it was inactive. Well, <laughs> that was the end of that. I have my con general contractors and I have my brokers in California. And we still have the company there. If you don't make any money, that it's eight hundred plus dollars just to have your my corporate license, and then you pay my broker's license four hundred dollars every so often, and then my, my general contract. It's, it's just California still gets money from. Yeah. But we have a business there. We do make some money. We have a lot of clientele in Central Valley. Well, one little known thing about California: I'm not a tax attorney, but if you have an LLC there, they charge you on the gross revenue. Not on the net. I forgot about that. They have, in a lot of cities have mill tax. That means based on the gross. Right. And we don't want Nevada to go that way. That's for sure. yeah, they're trying to do that here. That would, put them down at the bell. There are five states. And New Hampshire is a nice state. Right. My wife is from Beverly, Mass, which is right in the There's no income tax, no sales tax. They do have high property tax. But that's one source of collecting. But anyway, going back, we sidetracked a little bit. Reno's a nice town. Yeah. It's a real nice town. Love we're going to go to this later. We'll talk about what we'd like to do. We'll talk about fishing. Now. Okay. So, Bill, during your journey, what's the toughest time you ever had? You, you're definitely the. Well, I've been I've there. been up seven figures and down seven figures a couple of times. I mean, no risk, no reward. I mean, so, what's the biggest risk you ever took? That's hard to say. I take them all the time. <laughs> you yeah, know, but, but you know, I'm always looking ahead, trying to figure out where the market's going, what's going on. And what I love about the internet now is I can create a business online in a week. I can have it pump and money in two weeks. So why would I want to do a brick and mortar or anything else? No. I mean, yeah. it's uh, it, it's just exceptional. <laughs> the only challenge nowadays, I don't do anything with social media. I think it's a waste of time. And it's going to go away. I know that's a really crazy idea for a lot of you guys, but I just don't. Uh, I've got a Facebook page, a LinkedIn page, and a Twitter account, and I don't tweet or any of that stuff. It's just a waste of time, and the stuff that goes up on my Facebook page is a waste of time. Well, what we're seeing here, this is a little bit of social media, I know. and that this is Hangout, I, and it's, uh, it's live. It's going to go up to the cloud. It's going to feed different places. So it'll be all over social media. Yeah, I know. Well, um, they'll find you. If people want to pay me, they can come and buy my consulting. It's so, what, what is your site again? Your uh, well, there's three main sites. I mean, and two of these are ancient. They, they're 1990 sites. I never changed them because I'm top ranking uh, for all the keywords I want. But 
futures trading secrets com is my futures trading course. Uh, option options, I'm sorry, options for trading room .com is the new site I'm just putting up. I love futures blogger, uh, venture capital sites for ventureplan.com and venturemap.com. I'm just starting a business with a venturemap.com and download the, the diagram and the things you have to consider to start it. I will tell you, I don't know anything about crowdfunding. I think as a former venture capitalist, it's a little dangerous you can get a thousand junior stockholders, okay, when you're trying to raise real money. Um, That's right. You did form, you were a cap, venture capital. I had my own company, venture capital fund. And you yeah. bought the radio station. We didn't really talk about buying the radio station, did we? No, I just had a friend. Why don't we close up the first, first phase about you buying the radio station with venture capital? And that'll be. Finish because Terry says you gotta go to a meeting, so I'll have at least ten more minutes. I gotta finish up. All right. Well, uh, I had a friend, uh, Rodney, who came to me and said he needs general manager of this radio station. He said the owner wants to sell it to me, and uh, we need to raise money. The ones who want to sell it to you, a million bucks. Okay, the numbers didn't work out because it was more than the radio station could support. So we fiddled around. I was a financial guy uh, working on deals and deal structures and all this. But finally, I ended up going to a Chinese bank. Uh, they loaned us a million baht, hundred percent then. Okay, and I borrowed two hundred thousand from the owner for cash flow. Now at that time, the station was six months out on floppies. If you do any political advertising, those guys never pay. But we got that down to two weeks. So we got real profitable, real fast, and then Rodney made a couple of deals in Hawaiian local sports. Um, it put down every other radio station except us, and it took out the newspaper. So the only place people could advertise it with us. And Rodney and his brilliant management stuff said, we will not take an advertising dollar from you uh, for the first three months. So we ended up with a loyal customer base you can't believe. Ultimately, we ended up with um, five times the ratings of all the other radio stations come out. So we became the island uh, radio station. So if you go to kongradio.com, uh, you'll see the big gorilla and all that stuff. I don't know if John's changed the logo, or, but it is a local station. AM, FM combo, we have the longest running country in Western show. So we did had you, Hawaiian entertainers, all kinds of stuff. So did you sell it? Yeah, we sold it. By the way, this, nice is, this is live. We're actually broadcasting on, on Google right now. Google Hangouts, and you can come and watch it. I'll have the link. But you'll see on the production, I couldn't do what I just did if I had someone other than Bill, because he's been in this media business and done all these different things his whole life. And I know he has to go to a meeting like in five minutes. So we'll continue on and drive on, but I had to just go plug in the computer because I forgot to plug in the, the power to the Mac, which is working really hard right now. And by the way, next time, I'm, I'm learning this, this technology is new. And I'm going to have a new mic out here that will really be crystal clear. All right. We're just picking up off the computer and having fun right now. Isn't it? Well, I was going to tell you something funny about the radio station. I did, Go ahead. I did thousands of live um, presentations to as many as 11,000 people and 15,000 people speaking Japanese and stuff like that. So I was not unaccustomed to doing public uh, speaking. But I got on the radio station. Rodney asked me to take a shift because the DJ was gone. Anyway, I got in there, I looked at the microphone, and I totally froze. I couldn't say a word. That's hard to believe. <laughs> well, there was no audio. Okay. So finally he said he, he, he had me do the commercials for 2 a.m. of the flat animal report for all of the, the, the uh, plantation workers that were picking up flat animals on the road. Oh, my. Was that in the 70s? <laughs> no, in the 90s. 90s, 90s. Wow. Late mm -hmm. 70s, 90s. That's 90s. Wow. I know that the Japanese economy had torqued out, but it yeah. really did in the 70s and the 80s. It, it 
went well, a deep recession. It, it went way up. They invested $16 billion in the recession. In Hawaii. Huge, yeah, in Hawaii. It ran a huge bubble. And then they all decided to pull out of the community school. And they all left. Right. That was a nine-year recession. So. My family had a condo in the longest time in Watson. Mm -hmm. I was a kid. My grandmother did very well in business. But I know, I know the market up and down. Yeah, and it was just all over. So let's finish up here. I'm going to go into the bottom line questions. Do you, what do you like to use, a Mac or a PC? I've been using a PC forever because I used to build them. So you're one of the PC guys? Yeah, I'm one of the original PC guys. I always like to, are you a Mac or a PC? So well, I a... actually had an Altair or whatever it was. Bill Gates got the program. My dad got that and the program and the likes and stuff. Long time ago. Well, the old radio stations definitely used some of the early technologies to the PCs to Running. Oh yeah, we, we totally automated. It's all done. That's what the future is in yeah. radio. So, okay. one quick question about radio: What do you think the future of radio is? We're going to learn it. Yeah. It's got a place, but it's all integrated, you know, with the internet, and the radio, radio stations. I mean, the problem with radio stations is the amount of fuel or electricity. Right. Around that broadcast. This is very inexpensive. This is uh, published on iTunes, on demand. Mm -hmm. It's on Stitcher Radio, uh, worldwide. And then also iHeartRadio. They can do iHeart can do whatever they want with the podcast. Just don't try to play music. No, no, you do not play music. <laughs> Actually, there's different rules because if we weren't on demand, we could do 30 seconds of music. And since I'm on demand, we can. Ask Captain BMI. Right. You take your lunch. Right. We will not do that. We will not. In fact, I have everything that's basic stock. So, Bill, what is your favorite technology? All technologies. I'm going to ask you too. Since you were in the Navy and on a submarine, which is insane, what was your techno favorite technology back then? And now, what's your technology now? That you like? well, the technology back then was something called ultra low frequency. It's a trailing wire on a submarine, and it's a broadcast out of Michigan, and you can connect with anybody anywhere in the world. Um, now it's hard to say. I'm really fascinated with the uh, astronomy and the search for extra. Terrestrial light, you know, what are all those planets that found, right? That kind of stuff. That's the Hubble. Things. The Hubble. Is, Hubble. That's and low tech, a really nice fly rod. Well, Terry is behind me, so we're going to have to drive on. You know, low tech and a nice fly rod, that's good. He's going to have to teach me how to fly fish better. So, yeah, that's an exciting one. I live on the river, so yeah. it's out the back door. What is your favorite quote? If it's to be, it is up to me. If it's to be, it's up to me. That's good. Can you go more detail? No. Okay. My, my dad always, I was asking him a question, he said, I don't know, I'm just going to try it. If it works great, if it doesn't, try it again. So it's up to you. It's, yeah. You're going to make your own life. i got to do it. You know. What's I, your favorite book? I can grow rich, actually. It was one of the first things I read a long time ago. I think it's a classic. Uh, every other self-help book is a derivative of that book, so I go right to the source. Very I have good. actually original tapes of Napoleon Hill reading that. If you look at the barons among the turn of the century, no. you know, all the top. Well, Dale, or um, yeah. Carnegie came to him and said, I'll introduce you to 100 the top producers in our economy. This is after the Depression. You go interview them, and I'm not going to pay you a thing. And you write a book about it. And that's what he did. And it is exceptional. The latest book I read is a derivative of that. It's something called E Squared. Pam Grout. Really a funny, uh, lighthearted book that you can prove to yourself with thoughts and things. Good. So, Bill, what's the best advice you've ever received? The best what? The best advice that you've ever received. Get off your ass. That's the. <laughs> Go there. <laughs> now, who would tell you to get off your ass? I can't imagine you ever. Assets. Oh, assets. Excuse me. In fact, we might have to leave that up. Gee. That was my father. Get off your assets? Get up off your assets and get out the door and go do something. Okay. Yeah, that's your father. That's my father. It sounds like he started and never stopped. Well, he never did. He, he finally bought it on a Harley Davidson at age 85. He was still building it. In fact, if you want to go to Bill McCready model trains.com, you can see the stuff he did. It's on live steam locomotives. Well, we live steam, that's fun. Yeah. I, that's, that's fun. That's good stuff. I enjoy live steam. A lot of people do. That's a real art in itself. Yeah, well, he and Henry Crawford's buddies went around the Atlantic Valley and built 10 
layouts and flower farms and vegetable farms and run their agents here. You know, when you think of a live steam, this is really going back. I would say in the 1800s, live steam was like computers are today. Technology. That was the cutting edge that was technology. My grandfather had a railroad, the Gamisburg, from Eastern Washington. Is that where you originally from? No, I'm from Rockaway, Oregon. Actually, I was born across from the Toma Cheese Factory and I'm going to the hospital. So that, that, I, that's fishing country, isn't it? Yeah, oh, well, I go every spring for a lot of sea. I'll see you ahead. That's, that's wonderful. Ever been up to Alaska fishing? You must have gone. Yeah, I work on the bike one. I have a picture of me and Bill. Ranger helicopter, helping me out with a for the fishing rod. <laughs> no. Now, you know, that leads us into our tying it all together. And the first question we ask is when you're not working, in your case, I'm not sure if you really work or you just do things you love to do. But make money. No, I just basically do things I love to do the internet, trading, fishing, all these different things. And yeah, like I said, this is. I never consider it work. You're much too complex to interview in uh, 25 minutes, but. So what do you like doing when you're not doing what you ever do? Well, golfing and fishing, basically, now. Yeah. I've done lots of other things. I used to ski and else that I don't do anymore. I had a back problem in the back surgery. Tell me about your birthday. Were you on skiing again? Oh, yeah. I well, was skiing in the morning up at the horse. I went uh, golfing at Lake Bridge. Then I went fishing down the river. And then we went to El Dorado for dinner and show. Nice. Now, North Star, just up the hill, is very close. Morning, they go up the back from where you live in the Truckee River and up the back side. It's a very expensive area. All the snowboarders. Yeah, yeah, snowboarders now, right? That's beautiful. So, I know you like fishing. Tell us a little bit about fishing. Your favorite kind of fishing. Oh, I love to go steelhead fishing. And I go with a guy down in Tulma County, down in the Nestucca River. We put in about well, three hours up, and float down, and he knows every jumpy cranny. That's a monster fish. That's oh, I know, that's a beautiful big steelhead. Yeah. You keep one of them? Yeah. But uh, basically, you can only keep the uh, the hatchet. The wild run is what they're right. out. they got to be tagged. Yeah. That's right. That's interesting. Now, you fish out your back door, too. Yeah. Right? Truck. Uh, that's, truck is not a bad little river. A little rough this year because of the water flow. Well, yeah, but, uh, you know, one of the members of the truck is river. Which I'm a member of, um, went out to take pictures of this fish. Dropped the line in, about a five pound green. Wow, how far? And while he was sitting there, quite a ways by a neighbor, while he was sitting there, his Some line was dragging in the wire and he water and caught another one. Oh man, that's a good day. I go out between 8 and 8 30, and I'll usually go hit in the evening. Yeah. Yeah. And then right down here, we're downtown in Reno right now, but right across the street is a water park, and there's deep holes in the morning, and the kids aren't in there. Yeah. I've caught 14 inches out of there. Yeah, just yeah, the never fish right here, there. right here, right here, right here, I just, in the morning, because once the kids start showing up in the oh, yeah. rafters and all that. Yeah. So, Bill, this is an amazing conversation, way too short a time to do a full interview. And like Terry, your wife, is telling me, yeah, I gotta go, you're a busy guy. So for our timeliners, what's the most important takeaway from this interview for the people listening? Monetize your website as soon as possible. Well, I haven't done that. I know. Shame on you. <laughs> I've been working hard I know. this last year. And that's another story you'll have to tell sometime. So I will. I'll start working on that. I promise you. We'll work on it this week. You know, I'm going over to the desk every day for the interview and drop off my daughter. That's a nice drive, but I really have to help. Work on it. Keep your name. Yeah, we'll do. So, how can we reach you? What's the best way? I guess to go to websites. Um, yeah, you can use my main email. It's the word capital, like money, at venture plan. Capital at venture plan. Okay, and your websites? We've got um, any of them. Optionstradingroom.com is a good one to look at. We'll put those all up in Adam. Now, Bill has to go. I know I'm in trouble. So I kept it too long, but what an interesting conversation. And this is the first time we've done a live yeah. broadcast. Cool. You're going to be able to watch this, by the way. I'll send you the link. That's scary so thought. It's fun. Let's, let's buy out there, and we're all done here. And then a couple other things. You notice I had to run around and do this, because I used to right. do this on the computer. Now I do it in the back of RL5. Right. And we have to track the time in the show. Oh, cool. Thanks, Bill. Okay. See you out there. We're going to shut off now. Bye-bye. You want to introduce Terry? Terry's going to watch no, this. No, you got it all. She can, she can be mad. She gets too much press. <laughs>